Hey guys, welcome to Mr. Smith's Kitchen. I'm Brian from Mr. Smith Kitchen. And uh, today I thought we would continue on our tomato journey and uh, make some Rattel. So we're essentially doing like a six part canning of tomato journey, maybe seven part, I don't know. We'll just run with it until it dies out. Um, but there's just so many things we do with tomatoes. Tomatoes are probably one of the most versatile things you'll uh, ever see. I mean, so far we've made tomato sauce, uh, we've made uh, salsa. Today we're going to make Rattel, which um, it can be used in, in about any other Mexican dish known to man. Um, at least we use it a lot in our Mexican dishes. Um, you can make spaghetti sauce. You can make uh, marinade with marinara or just a marinara sauce or a meat sauce. You can do crushed tomatoes. You can do diced tomatoes. Uh, as far as processing goes, you can do whole tomatoes. So what we're going to do today when making the Rotel is actually a, the very first step is what you would essentially do for uh, making crushed tomatoes, for making diced tomatoes, um, all that good stuff. So this is the, the beginning of this could be taken off in six different directions, essentially. Uh, if you're new to my channel, welcome. Uh, glad you stopped by. Hope you subscribe and get something out of my uh, videos. Check some of my other videos out, hands down. Uh, if you're returning, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below. Notification bell is right next to that. Let you know when my videos come out. And um, thumbs up, thumbs down. Always appreciated. Does two things. Lets me know how I'm doing. Uh, unless you're being a, a troll and just giving me a thumbs down to give me a thumbs down. But that's okay. That That's okay. Um, because the other thing it does is it gets us out into the uh, and out into other people's feeds along with you subscribing. Um, those both help generate a, a bigger, better neighborhood, so to speak. And uh, that's always awesome. Uh, comments, I try to respond to all of them, um, whether it be with an additional comment or at least a heart, uh, depending. And um, all I ask is you keep them civil. You know, be nice. Yeah, I, we, we are a very diverse group and... If you're, if you're talking nonsense and not being nice, you'll probably get banned from our neighborhood. It's okay to disagree, though. Don't get me wrong. Just think before you type. All right, so what we need to do first is get down here to the counter so we can see what's going on down here. We'll talk about a couple of things we may need and uh, start this process. All right, hold on for me one second. All right, we're down here at the counter, and there's not a whole lot to make in this, and it's... Technically, it's just tomatoes and peppers. Uh, peppers are your choice. Rattel is a name brand. Um, but it's, it's tomatoes, peppers, and a few spices. And yeah, there's not a whole lot of people on YouTube that make this, but it is absolutely delicious. And in the long run, especially if you grow your own stuff, can save you a fortune at the grocery store. Right now, with the inflation up the way it is, um, things have gotten expensive, like Rotel, for example, to buy in the store, a can of Rotel used to be 89 to 99 cents, depending on where you went. Now it is $1.39 to $2, depending on where you go. And as it stands right now, us making it ourselves, the tomatoes are still from our garden. This is the last round. After this, I'll have to start buying them, which I found them for 98 cents a pound, which is uh, 41 cents cheaper than most people were going for. But so these didn't cost us anything because we already counted for the seeds and the cost of the sauce when we made those. Um, you should already have a pot. You're going to need a stock pot. Um, you're going to need a couple measuring cups and, um, and an, additionally another pot to put it in and some cold water. So we're going to need ice water or hot water, cold water, a knife, a cutting board of some sort, and something to measure with. But... We already have those things, so they don't cost anything. The jalapenos I'm putting in this this time, instead of the hatch chilies like I did in the first round, um, didn't cost anything. They came from the garden. The garlic cost me a dollar fifty for the whole clove, and I'm using a quarter of it, so thirty-five cents. So right now we're out maybe thirty-five cents, and I already have the jars and the lids, uh, a handful of spices. So we're looking at maybe a dollar to make you know what's going to probably be close to. 12 cans of Rotel, um, or tomatoes and peppers as the case may be. So anyhow, let's get started. I've got water on here and it, it's heating up, it's hot. You don't need it boiling, but you, the hotter you have it, the quicker this goes. 
And then in my sink, I have just cold water. All right, you want it as cold as you can possibly get it. Dump a tray of ice cubes in there and it'll be as cold as you can get it. So with each tomato, once again, I'm using the aromas, but for this, you can pretty much use any tomato you like. Um, I'm gonna take my knife, just like that, and I'm gonna score it on the bottom with an X. All right, and I'm gonna do about a half a dozen of those so we can get started with it. Now, what this does is we're about to put these in the boiling hot water and we're gonna take the skins off the tomatoes. Now, when you do them, you don't want to go deep. That one's not quite ripe enough. You just wanna simply score the skin. You don't wanna go so much down into the flesh. And that way, after but by doing this, it'll uh, cause the skin to start to split off of it. And you'll see, uh, I'll show you. The second the skin splits, we take it out of the hot water, put it in the cold water. That stops the cooking process. We're essentially starting to cook these. And then we're just gonna peel the skins off of them. So all we gotta do, put these in here. Now you will need something to take these out with, whether it's a pair of tongs or whatever. And this could take anywhere from a second to a minute. I'm just using a basket, a wire basket, and I'm gonna let these go until they split. Once they split, I'll show you. All right, so here is our first split tomato. See how it's got that split in it? So now we're just gonna quickly put it in the ice water. And another one that's split right there. And you don't wanna leave them in the water too, the hot water too long, because if you do, you'll end up with cooked tomato. Okay, so. We got our tomatoes out of the pot. Now all we have to do is, remember those, egg, that X we made? Watch this, bam, peels right off, just like that. So we wanna get that peeled off, right? Get our skin peeled off, and then throw the peel in the trash, or send it out to your garden. And then I'm gonna cut the end off of it, just like such. Dice it up. And like I said, if we were doing if we were doing diced tomatoes, right here you go. Dice them up and then they're ready to rock and roll. We would just heat them up and can them. Crushed tomatoes, we'd be crushing them right now. So we'll get these diced up. And then I don't have a bench scraper. I need 12 cups of Roma tomatoes for, or 12 cups of tomatoes in general. Mine just happen to be Roma to do this with. All right, so let me show you one more time. Tomato, right where the crack is or up here where you cut, peel, peel, just like that. Cut the end off, or the top off. You don't want that. That's no different than when we were making salsa or doing tomato sauce. You don't need the stem. Cut it in half. Cut that into quarters. And then dice it up to whatever size chunks you like. Yeah, that, that'll be completely up to you. Um, however you want your tomatoes and peppers to be. And that's it for that part. So I'll go ahead and get the rest of these done up. We'll get the 12 cups done. And when I come back, we'll start uh, putting things together and talking about the other ingredients. Okay, so we got our tomatoes peeled. It took all of about 15, 20 minutes, all right? I mean, it really is just a quick, fast, easy process. I got them in a container, right? And I got the container going. I got my uh, big stock pot over here, which I'm gonna turn on because I'm a ninny and wait, it's heating up and ready to go. So what are we adding to our tomatoes? <clears throat> well, let's talk about the tomatoes for a second first. There's our tomatoes. Now, uh, when you buy the canned uh, tomatoes and peppers at the store, 
you'll see that they are solid chunks still. They put a chemical in, it's a food grade chemical, I mean, don't get me wrong, in with their tomatoes that allows them to stay firm no matter how long they're cooked. So this, they won't stay as firm. You'll, you'll have a little bit of tomato juice in there also, which is okay, because I'm here to tell you, after three years of making this, I way prefer homemade to store-bought. Although we still, like I said, we still buy canned Rattel all the time. Um, because it is something that, I mean, when I'm running low on the homemade or whatever, because I'm limited, you know, we'll, we'll probably have 30 cans of Rattel to start fall and winter with. Yeah, I will probably be out before the end of winter, I guarantee it. All right, but to this, oh, another option. If you would like, you can roast your tomatoes and any peppers you put in this. Um, you can either stick them in the oven for uh, about 20, 30 minutes at 425, and then peel them and get that roasted flavor. You can put them on your grill if you have a grill or if you have a gas burner, um, you can char them on that. But, and that's a lot of work being up with the gas burner because you're going to go through a lot of tomatoes, roughly 15 pounds of tomatoes or about 35, 40 tomatoes. But anyhow, that's an option. So we've got our tomatoes in here, 12 cups of tomatoes. They might be closer to 13, but I'm pretty sure it's 12. Turn that on. To that, I am going to add a cup and a half of peppers. All right, now in this case, it's jalapenos. Uh, it's a cup of jalapenos and a half a cup of uh, bell pepper. I wanted it to all be green and I ran out of jalapenos. But I'm gonna put that in there. Like I said, you can use any pepper you want, banana, habanero, you know, Black Widow, Scorpion, Trinidad, I mean, whatever. Um, we're going to put those in there, okay, cup and a half. And then I am going to put four cloves of minced garlic in there. All right, now, I, this recipe is tested. Um, so those are pretty much, you want 12 cups of tomatoes, um, you want 12 cups of tomatoes, a cup and a half, or a cup of peppers of your choice, four cloves of garlic. I have a cup and a half of peppers because I went over the 12 pound uh, of tomatoes, and the tomatoes are highly acidic where the peppers are not. So, like for instance, if you wanted to add onion to this, if you wanted to add a quarter cup of onion to this, you'd have to take away a quarter cup of peppers. But that's, well, you want to keep the balance. All right, but I've got 13 cups of, 13 and change of tomatoes, so I could, I added more peppers to it. Now, we're going to compensate for that down the road, because uh, we got to put some citric acid in it, just like we did with the uh, tomato sauce. But here's where we get to play, because you can add as much or as little as this as you want. I have a tablespoon of, uh, I'm sorry, a teaspoon of coriander. I got about a teaspoon and a half of uh, ro uh, roasted paprika. I have got two teaspoons of coriander, two teaspoons of Mexican oregano. And if you have never had Mexican oregano, you are missing out. That is the most amazing stuff ever. And then I've got three teaspoons of salt. I'm gonna put all this in there, all right? Boom, done. I'm telling you, this is like the easiest thing in the world. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna stir this up, give it a good stir, and you'll have juice down there at the bottom from your tomatoes, but depending on what tomatoes you use depends on uh, what, how much juice you have. Now, sure, I don't remember what I was gonna say, but anyhow. I've got this turned on. I'm gonna bring this up to a, a slow boil, just like we did last week with the salsa. And I'm gonna let it slow boil with the lid on it for 10 minutes, all right? So when I come back, this will have boiled for 10 minutes and we'll be set up to start uh, canning. All right, I'll see you here in a second. All right, been 10 minutes. We've been uh, 
slow boiling that. Still got the water heating up over here. Got my jars out now. Like I've said the last two canning sessions we've done. Got my jars sitting in hot water after I washed them. Uh, hot soapy water, dried them. Now I got them in just plain hot water. Uh, my lids, they're ball lids and they we don't have to, according to their directions, we don't have to boil them and sterilize them anymore. Uh, we just have to wash them. So those are done also, sitting right here next to me. So let me get you down here right quick to where you can see things. There we are. Now, we're just gonna, all we gotta do now is fill up our jars and we're gonna fill them to a half inch of headspace, which with these jars in this case, it's just to that lip right there. You know, um, which is, makes it easy, right? So we just put our uh, funnel in there. You'll need that funnel just like the last couple times we've canned. We'll, we're just gonna take them and fill them all the way up to that rim, which is a half inch of headspace. Just like such. And just like any other time, we'll go ahead and check it, make sure we're where it needs to be. Not, not quite there yet. So we'll just a little more. Put it in there. All right, we are golden there. Oh, let me go ahead and fill up a couple more of these real quick. And then we can move into the next step. Now, it's important to keep your jars warm. You know, in that warm water until you pull them out. That way, they're close to temperature with what everything else you're doing. You don't want to... You don't want really cold jars to go with a really hot liquid. You, you run a risk of breaking them that way. There is one extra step to this that we didn't have to do with the tomato sauce and I probably should have done with the salsa, but I didn't. And I'll show it to you here in a second. Let me get this last jar filled. Fill it up. And I'm not even really sure you have to do it with this, but I'm going to show it to you anyhow because it's a good practice to get into. Um, the only time you don't really have to do it is when you're doing like all liquids. Um, so like if you're doing chicken broth or you have beef or tomato sauce you don't really have to so much do it with it and that is deep bubble all right now the plastic tool that comes with the uh, kit to measure with also acts as a deep bubble there we go got a little high on that one all right we're in good shape with those three so now what I'm going to do is I'll take the other end of this stick and I'm just going to poke it through, make sure there's no air trapped underneath the tomato or anything. And there shouldn't be. These homemade uh, Rattel or tomatoes and peppers is usually liquidy enough that uh, it won't hold any bubbles. But if you're doing beans or something like that, um, you'll need it to bubble, which you'll see because we're going to do some beans down the road. All right, now I'm going to get some vinegar here on my towel and we'll wipe this off. You can also use water if you don't have any vinegar to wipe your rims with, that's okay. There's there's no rule that says you can't, it just says you have to wipe these rims off. You don't want to do it with a dry towel. So we got those wiped off, put our lids on there center, just like such. That's warm. Get our rings. Put our rings on there. I don't know if you can see. And we're gonna put them on finger tight, remember? Finger tight, not palm death grip tight, finger tight. Get those rings on there. Now be careful, your jars where you just fill them up, they're gonna be hot. You don't wanna yeah, you won't pay attention. If you have to, you use a towel or something to hold on to them with. But finger tight, right? Not death grip, finger tight. And then we're just going to set them in our canner here. While that water's warming up. Now, I don't recommend to anybody else to put your hands in the hot water. I I got a habit of doing it. I got what's called oven hands from all the years of working in restaurants and my hands can take a pretty good amount of heat before it hurts. 
All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and do up the rest of these jars, and we'll figure out how many jars we got exactly. Last time we got 14, uh, 15. Uh, we'll see how many we get this time. Okay, so I got all my jars in my can, or in my canner. So I got uh, 14 total, just like last time. It was 14. Now, one thing I did forget to tell you to do, and if you forget, as long as you get it in there, before you process it, you're fine. Um, but the citric acid. I mean, you have a couple different. You have a couple different options here. You can either use the citric acid like we do, or you can use lemon juice. I'm using the eight ounce jelly jars. Is what they're called as jelly jars, um, and that's because they're the closest to the ten ounce cans of Rattel. Because um, I don't want to go pints at sixteen, because that's too much um, for what we use. Four of those, you can use an eighth of a teaspoon, eighth of a teaspoon of citric acid, or you can use a half of a tablespoon of lemon juice. I use citric acid because it's a lot cheaper. It goes a lot further and it, I, in my opinion, I think it does a little better job. It doesn't add that lemon taste to it, um, which I don't want in my Rattel. But you put a teaspoon or an eighth of a teaspoon of this in your jar and then fill it up or like with the first two one, first two, because that's what I remembered after I, after we did our first round, <clears throat> I went back in, just put it in on the top and stirred it in, um, and then put it in the bottom of the other uh, eleven jars we did. So don't forget this. If not, your your Rotel won't lie. It, it can cause you all kinds of problems. What citric acid or lemon juice does is it balances the acidity in the jar, you know, which gives it. The ability to be preservable and it gives it a shelf life um, without it you run the risk of getting botulism due to acid swings you know you, you want that because your tomatoes yes they should have a high acidity level but your peppers don't your spices don't have any um, so you, you want this so don't forget eighth of a teaspoon of citric acid or a half a tablespoon of lemon juice whichever you have all right or you prefer so, that being said, what are we going to do now? Well, just like the last two sessions, we're water bath canning. So, I'm just going to put the lid on this. I'm going to bring it up to a boil. I'll set my timer once it reaches a good rolling boil for 20 minutes. And then, uh, after the 20 minutes is up, I'll turn the heat off, turn the timer off, and I'll let them sit for 10 minutes. And then, we'll take a look at them and talk about what to do next. All right, I'll see you here in just a second. All right, guys, well, we processed them. 20 minutes boiling water, 10 minutes of rest. And then I got, went ahead and got them out of the, uh, can, uh, the yeah, pot, the water bath container. And now all we have left to do is uh, let them sit. Um, I'm not gonna fuss with them or mess with them. And they have to sit for about 12 to 24 hours. They need to get cooled all the way down, um, and we got to hear that tinging noise like we heard in the last couple videos. I heard some of them popping already, but not all of them yet. And like I said, I've said before, I mean, it could take anywhere from a couple seconds once you pull them out to an hour or so um, before they finally completely seal. That being said, you know, I was thinking, we never did talk about, you know, what do you do if they don't seal? Or what if you do if you have a little extra left over? Um, you just put it in the fridge and, and use it within you know, three or four days um, at most, depending on what it is. Uh, two to four days, I'll say, uh, depending on what it is. But yeah, oh, there it went. Um, well, there's one of them, but anyway. But uh, so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and uh, get these, let these sit, and then. Uh, in the morning because it's evening now we'll go ahead and uh talk about what to put on the t right on the tops of them and uh where to store them and i promise i won't repeat that after probably after this video but i and not to keep you but it i find it important to kind of repeat some things over and over again because this might be somebody's first video and, and i don't want them to miss out on a step just because i've repeated it in other videos it's the same it's just like my introduction how do I know this isn't your first video? You know, if I didn't introduce myself and welcome you and thank you and things like that, you know, you may feel like I don't care, and I do. So, 
that being said, we'll let those sit here. And uh, when I come back, we'll uh, go ahead and get them dated and uh, write what they are on them and talk about where to put them. All right, I'll see you here in a second. All right, guys, good morning. Um, so we got our Rotel done. Uh, we let it sit overnight. And now it's time to put it into storage. So let me first show you what we got to do to put it into storage. It's uh, It's been a good, I don't know, 16 hours since uh, we processed it. So the first thing we're going to do is I go through and I tap all the tops to make sure they're all sealed. If they weren't sealed, we would have heard a dink, you know, the minute I hit it, just like a... Uh, freshness seal that you would find on like a pickle jar from the store. So now I'm going to take the lid off, or the, the lid's ring off, and I'm going to grab a hold of this and I'm going to hold it by the lid. It should The lid should hold the jar up. If it does not, that means it didn't seal properly and we're probably going to discard it. Um, in some cases, like I, with this being tomatoes and being heavily acidic, I probably wouldn't discard it. I would probably just stick it in the fridge. Uh, but there are some things, you know, smell it, look at it. Um, if it looks okay, it probably is. Now, I'm not suggesting I, that you do that. Um, when in doubt, throw it out, always. So the next thing I'm going to do on here is I'm going to write what it is. And I'm going to put Rotel Jalapeno on it. And I'm going to write eight. What is today's date? Uh, 29, 22 on it. And then set it aside. I'm gonna do the same thing with the rest of them. Now, this one didn't have anything on it on the top, but let's say it did. You know, all you gotta do, and this is probably good practice to get into anyhow. I do it with most of my jars, but I just wipe the top off, you know, and if there's, you see anything on the side, just give the sides a good wipe. You wanna give it a good wipe down. And then dry off the top. That way you got a good clean writing surface. And then you just, like I said, you just write what it is on there. Uh, some people have fancy lids or fancy uh, printers that they like to do that with uh, or label with. And that's cool if you've got one and you can print labels. I don't, so I just write it on there as it is, you know, with a, a black Sharpie. All right, so I'll get the other 12 of those banged out, and then we'll uh, put them away. So let's talk about putting them away real quick. And I promise I won't bore you every video with uh, uh, these instructions. Although, um, it's kind of important. Whether this is your first video you've ever seen from me, you've never can before, and you need to know. So that's why I repeat myself a lot in some of my videos on what to do, who I am, you know, and stuff like that because I don't know if this is your first video and I want to welcome you and, and make sure you do things right. So anyhow, storage. Um, to optimize storing your uh, processed food, get the maximum life out of them, which could be anywhere from, you know, depending on what it is, eight months to 10 years, uh, well, five years on average. Um, like these, if they were to hold true, probably last three or four years, but I won't have them past winter. Um, because we'll use them. You want to keep your stuff stored in a cooler, dry place. Now, by cool, I mean 68 to 72 is optimal. Um, I, we store ours down in the basement in the grocery store. That It stays 68 to 72 down there all year long. You don't want a bunch of sunlight on your uh, processed canned goods. You, you want it to be a... a dark place if possible uh our grocery store has a a window in it but it is covered by a plastic uh a, to keep the cold out basically um for the winter time but it's been on there since november of last year and that filters out most of the light and that way the only light the canned goods get is the fake light i produce when i turn the light on uh you want to, when you put it, like when I put these down there, I will put them behind the Rotel that I made earlier. That way it's first in, first out, or FIFO. Um, and we know that things are getting rotated properly. You always want to put your oldest to the front of the shelf so that way it gets used first. And I think that's it. 
uh, labeled. What is it? What day did you make it? What's the date you made it? Um, and cool, dry place if possible. You know, um, and humidity is a huge factor. These rings love to rust. And even though the, the lids work real hard not to, they can rust also if they sit too long. Um, they'll probably start to rust long before that seal ever breaks. Now, if you get downstairs to get something off the shelf and you grab it and the lid falls off of it or the lid's open, pitch it. Um, just don't even think about it. Just throw it away. Reason being, botulism. That means that there was something in that jar that, and botulism is good for this. It's the number one thing to do this. It will, uh, cause a gaseous state inside the container and pop the lid off. Um, and that means that it's, you, you don't want to use it. You don't know when that lid fell off. You don't know when, you know, uh, that, that bacteria it just, it could be all bad. So throw it away. If the lid pops, if the lid is off or open, it's open, just throw it away. That being said, um, try, give this a try. It's quick. It's easy. Um, you know, you may get it done in a day if you can early in the morning. You know, you can put them away in the evening. Um, they just have to set. But try these. Uh, so far, the, the three things we've done, the tomato sauce, the salsa, and this and this uh, green pepper and tomato, or green pepper, jalapeno pepper and tomato rotel, um, are good, easy, beginner things to make most tomato things are because uh, you have the option of water bathroom you can also pressure can them but it's more of a headache than anything else but anyhow um give these a try you know canning is fun it gives you a chance to garden it gives you a chance to know what's in your food it gives you a chance to save some money this whole thing cost me pretty much nothing the one bell pepper we put in there from the garden jalapenos from the garden tomatoes from the garden and they were all from seeds that we bought last year so i didn't buy any seeds this year um the jars we already owned the rings we already owned the lids i will we'll go to the lids i spent uh three dollars and fifty cents in the lids that i actually bought last year um so this literally cost me nothing this go around uh, but at most, it was $3.50 for 14 things of Rattel. That's almost $20 worth of Rattel for $3.50. So, that being said, um, I really have no idea what we're going to do for dinner next week. I don't know what we're going to do for dessert next week. It'll be a surprise. Um, but we will. We will have dinner and we will have dessert. And... <clears throat> We may even learn how to make some spaghetti sauce. I got a, right now, uh, my, one of my grocery stores has uh, Roma tomatoes on sale for 98 cents a pound, which truth be told is cheaper than you can get them wholesale. Um, so I may go buy a bunch of tomatoes because I don't have a lot left on the vine and what I have is green. So I gotta wait on those to ripen. Uh, but I really need to get, there's not nearly enough out there to make spaghetti sauce, pizza sauce, and marinara sauce. Well meat sauce um and those are the three things we have left to do so now i know next year even though we grew 20 some plants worth of tomatoes and got over 100 pounds worth of tomatoes off plants it wasn't enough to meet our needs which is okay different story for a different time so anyhow next week i'll meet you at least wednesday for dinner thursday for dessert and until then i love you i love you very much tell somebody else you love them and you love them very much it's going to make their day a whole lot better Make this for telling, give them a couple jars. You could even teach them how to do it. Then you can swap canned goods. It'd be awesome. Form a friendship that way. So next week, I'll see you for dinner. All right. I love you. Talk to you later. Bye.